Hey guys, this is WizWorld100, and welcome to the Season 2 finale of the Sega Genesis Quickie. Now, this episode will be a little different from my usual, and may repeat in future videos. Not counting the guest starring, which in today's episode is with Down Phoenix! Hey guys, it's Down Phoenix, and it's time to take a look at the Gold Next Trilogy. Yes, let's do that! You're the viewers, and we're the reviewers! So, how are we going to cram all three of these stories into this quickie? Oh, don't worry about that. I have an idea. Just read them all. Okay, here it goes. Vanquished in Golden Act Actress 1, stinging defeat the Death Golden Act 2, has been defeated the evil year is a dark time. A world of years has come from the evil Death Stealing has a powerful guilt. The Nap has risen to a peace and prosperity. With the devastation of now in the world of this chaos. Breathe the powerful next, heroes, now in the dark will put a fierce barbarian, on three heroes just in the dark, and any fearless work, to your are willing to risk their lives to put a stop to the terror. It will to take meet this, all the time to start the Loma journey, all of your games that fight against the defeat and death fight onward to save the race of the final showdown. A battle has never been so much fun. Okay, I've read them all. I don't know how you're gonna fit them in, Wiz. Oh, you'll see when I put it up. But in the meantime, why don't we talk about all three stories? The story of all three Goldnecks games were very bare bones and followed a very similar sequence of events that flowed around stopping the villain with the Goldnecks. In the first game, our main hero's reason for fighting the Big Bad is to avenge their family members that were murdered by Death Adder, which has more of an impact than the later games where they didn't really have too much of a motive to fight the Big Bad. In number two, a Big Bad villain appears and they have to stop him, which is pretty much it. In number three, Thunderhead, who's not playable in three, has been keeping the Golden Axe safe until it got stolen, and he tells our heroes to go retrieve it or else bad things will happen. As you can tell, the latter two seems more like they're doing it out of obligation rather than the first game which involves revenge. It just sounds more interesting. Speaking of sound... Hey, I've noticed you never really mentioned the music much in previous quickies. Well, for the most part, the music in most of these Sega Genesis quickies are pretty forgettable. Like, for instance, the music in Echo the Dolphin. But if it's good like the music in Columns 3, I'll usually mention it. So, what did you think of the music in the Golden Axe trilogy? Well, I have to say, Golden Axe 1 and 2 has really good music, with number 2 having one of the best tracks I've heard in the series and on the Genesis. Golden Axe 1 does have very nostalgic game music and is still quite good, but nothing compared to Golden Axe 2 having very fitting themes in many of the levels. very epic music like the boss theme. Golden Axe 3 has a couple of decent tracks like the boss theme, but most of it sounds bland and unmemorable. Personally, I enjoyed the music in all three games, but I would agree that Golden Axe 2 is the best being made from the ground up on the Genesis hardware. Unlike Golden Axe 1, which did it well too, but it was an arcade port that just did not sound as good as it could have on the Genesis. And like you said, Golden Axe 3 has a couple of decent tracks, but a lot of the music sounded out of place in the Golden Axe game, and would have fit better in other games, like Streets of Rage or Sonic. Well, at least unlike the music, the look of all three games is consistent. Ah, <sighs> crap. Ah, the part I don't like talking about in almost any game because our viewers can clearly see if the graphics are good or not. But we can't leave it out now, can we? No, we can't. As far as the graphics go, Golden Axe 1 and 2 are pretty similar, but 2 is certainly more fluid and has some better looking backgrounds, sprites, and animations. It was more consistent and natural. 3 has the best looking sprites on the characters and some of the backgrounds are better than the rest. And while it's difficult to tell since Golden Axe 3 looks relatively similar to the first two games, it is slightly more detailed in certain parts of the game, as Down Phoenix mentioned with the sprites. But this also makes other things look like a mess because they tried to be too detailed. Oh yeah, I forgot, mine's a crappy looking spell. It looks like an ice cream cone. 
of crap. The graphics in 3 aren't terrible, but you can definitely tell that some of the artwork feels a little off, like the color feels a little more washed out or dull compared to the previous games. 3 had several backgrounds and animations that collided, where some looked good and some looked bad. Good thing it doesn't collide with the gameplay. Finally, we get to the most important aspect of the Golden Axe series, the gameplay. Yes, and let me tell you, there is a lot to talk about with the gameplay. The Golden Axe games are obviously beat-em-up games. You get to choose from a couple of different characters to play as, each having their own strengths and weaknesses. Like for instance, in Golden Axe 1 and 2, Gilius Thunderhead does the most damage in the game, but Tyrus Flare has the most powerful magic because she uses the most pot out of the three. <laughs> pot. And Conan the Barbarian, who's actually called Axe Battler, but we'll just call him Conan, who's the balanced middleman. It's kind of amusing because the Axe Battler, I mean Conan, uses a sword and not an axe to battle. But what everyone does use to battle their enemies, in addition to beating them up, is the magic they summon from the pot they gather and the beast riding. In every game, you get a number of beast or bazarians, as they're called, to ride on, and they're very helpful, such as the chicken leg from Altered Beast swinging its tail to the fire-breathing dragons. The first game had the most useful bazarians to use, but they start to become a little more useless as the series went on till 3, where you have the two most useless bazarians to use because they have next to no range to attack unlike the previous Bazarians. You also can't bring any of them into the next stage when you reach the end of the level, which sucks. At the end of many stages, as well as throughout each stage, you have the opportunity to replenish your magic and health by attacking thieves or wizards in the second game. Hey look, it's a Jawa! Wow, they do kind of look like Jawas. Anyway, make sure to hit them all so you can fill up your magic and health. The magic in the games rock, with lightning, earth, water, and fire magic to rain on your enemies. The second game has an option with its magic system where you can charge up how much you want to use, and not blow all of it up in one use like in the first game, but it does have the option for the original setting if you want it to. The third game dismisses the special magic feature for some reason, and instead sort of returns to the first game's magic system with a small tweak that doesn't use up all the magic, and everybody has the same amount of magic. However, if you're playing in two-player, you can combine your magic together and summon some really powerful spells, like Calling Death to come slay your enemy. Summon death! Whoa! That's pretty awesome, my guys. Well, putting death aside, the beat em up mechanics in the first game were simplistic, being from an arcade game, with some combos and an exploit that makes dealing with enemies much easier. The second game has a couple of small fixes and tweaks like the magic system, but the combat in Golden Axe 2 is definitely faster and smoother. The third game adds to the beat em up mechanics and makes it a little more technical, with several moves you can do like forward attacks, low attacks, projectile attacks, and blocking in addition to what you can do in the previous game. Golden X3 also has a few tweaks and additions different from the previous games, like your health bar is more clear on how close you are to dying, falling in a pit doesn't mean instant death, two new characters are introduced to the series, having multiple paths you can choose to go, having to manually pick up items which I find pointless in single player, but very helpful in two player to share the power-ups, and the best duel mode out of all three games. The duel mode in the previous game is not very good, mostly because it was just mashing the attack button which made the player versus pointless and dull, and fighting the AI isn't too interesting either. That is because the AI is not that smart and you can easily trick him into walking into your attacks, but they can also be very cheap if you're fighting the bosses or skeletons. I hate the skeletons. Some of the enemies are annoying to fight, but the skeletons are pretty fudging cheap as they can sneak in hits and combo you. They get even worse in the third game where they can block your attacks and then sneak some hits in. Well, they're not that bad if you can do a well-timed jump attack. And while the blocking mechanics is a nice introduction, it's not done very well with having to press the attack and holding back. Why can't it be its own button if you have a six button controller? Speaking of controllers, have you ever wondered what the mode button on your six button Genesis controller is for? Well, that's for setting the controller to a three or six button layout for certain games when you start your system up like Golden Axe 2. If you don't set it, the game freaks out on you as my controller sort of had the same problem like in Decap Attack where the buttons were assigned to the wrong layout. Well, back to blocking. It's pretty annoying executing the block fluidly, and it's almost mandatory to learn because in most of the boss fights you have to utilize the block, otherwise you'll have a hard time hitting and beating the bosses. 
Thank goodness there's no time limit. And even then, they don't quite hold a candle to the final bosses of each game. The final boss in each game are and can be the cheapest fights of all, with the first one having skeletons that don't die constantly coming after you, and summoning magic every time he hits you. The second one is not so bad, but he does constantly summon a couple of skeletons to get in your way. The third one has some bullcrap attacks, but fortunately no minions. But like I mentioned earlier, there are some exploits you can do that will help you beat the game and the bosses. In the first game, you can stunlock enemies and bosses, which they can also do to you, and in the second game, Gilius Thunderhead has a really useful spin attack that prevents you from getting tackled from behind if you time it right. What you might guess would make Thunderhead the most crippled character to use, and he is. But Thunderhead at least doesn't break the game. Like say for instance Kronos the Panther from Golden X3, being one of the two characters that replaced Thunderhead who we can't play as, where he has an unblockable pounce attack. Look at this! Kronos just cripples the balance in Golden X3 and almost makes the other characters pointless, since his attacks do it all. And because of that, Wiz cheesed every enemy in boss fight during our playthrough, including the true final boss. Though in order to fight the true final boss in the third game, you do have to have at least a B rank to be able to face him, which makes use of the scoring system in the previous games that didn't really do anything other than say how great you are. Speaking of scoring systems and how great things are... Overall, I enjoyed all three games, despite some mishaps like getting each other killed, the hitbox of everything, and the skeletons. Golden Axe 1 is definitely worth checking out as one of the classic games to play, but my favorite one to play and recommend is definitely Golden Axe 2 with its fantastic music track, faster gameplay tweaks, improved magic system if you chose to use it, and playing as Thunderhead who's just great to play as. Golden Axe 3 is technically better as a game with its designs and ideas, but some of the things in the game could be better like the music, some of the gameplay mechanics, and being able to play as Thunderhead who's not playable in the third game, which the Earth Game Manual lies. But nonetheless, I would suggest checking them all out, and I definitely recommend Golden Axe 2 out of the three. What about you, Down Phoenix? It is really tough to say, as I've always liked Golden Axe 2 the best, but with our look at this trilogy, I'm starting to enjoy 3 just as much. I feel that 2 is the best game to play for newcomers, and I also enjoy the fast-paced gameplay since it flows better than the other games. But 3, even though it's rough around the edges, has aged pretty well with its mechanics such as the branching paths. I also recommend checking out the first game, even though it doesn't have the refined gameplay of 2 or the extra features of 3. And that's all I've got to say about the Golden Axe Trilogy. So that's the Golden Axe Trilogy on the Sega Genesis, and the end of Season 2 of Sega Genesis Quickies. I'm WizWorld100, he's Down Phoenix, go check him out. You're the viewers, and we're the reviewers, so stay tuned for more from LazyWorks Creations. See ya! Down Phoenix out. One has some bull dookie attacks, but fortunately no minions. Bull dookie, really? Bull cookie.